on today, there is a word coming out of 2 Peter. We'll be looking in 2 Peter chapter 1. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 8. Again, that would be 2 Peter chapter 1. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 8. Amen. 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 I'll be reading from the New King James Bible, which says, Simon Peter, a bondservant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and our Savior, Christ Jesus, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Christ Jesus. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to your knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abide, you will neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Christ Jesus. Thank you for your patience. Amen. Notice what Paul, excuse me, what Peter says in verse 5. He says, but also for this very reason, give all diligence to add to your faith virtue and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brother kindness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. And I just want to talk to you from the subject. Let's keep on growing in the faith. Yes, amen. Let's keep on growing in the faith. When we began to look at this epistle, verse 1 in this book starts off saying, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, when you begin to think about Peter, you're reminded how rough and tough Peter used to be. Yes, Peter had showed a sinful ways of life even as a Christian. Because you can recall, this is the same Peter that confessed that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And I know by reading Matthew 16 and 16 that Peter was saved. But when you read the things that Peter did and say, you will realize that Peter blew his testimony plenty times over and over again. Because this is the same Peter, y'all, that cut off the ear of the high priest's slave. Y'all, this is the same Peter who denied Jesus not once, not twice, but he denied Jesus three times. Y'all, this is the same Peter who boldly lied to Jesus by saying, I would never deny you. Yes, this is the same Peter that said to the maid, when the maid rather said to him, are you sure you're not one of the followers of Jesus Christ? Y'all, this is the same Peter that cussed in front of her and swore that he knew not the man. Yes, y'all, this is the same Peter that Paul had to call out for being a hypocrite to the Gentiles when he was in front of the Jews in the city of Antioch. Y'all, this is the same Peter, y'all, that's now preaching and telling us how to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. And y'all, I truly believe that Peter, when writing this chapter, was encouraging not only me, but he was encouraging you 
and all of us, if we, if he can grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then he, we can all truly grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Peter was saying, if I can do it, y'all seen my background, y'all seen my bad report, but here I am right now in the Bible telling you what you need to do in growing in the grace and the knowledge of my Lord and Savior. If I can do it, then I know surely that you can do it as well. Because Peter knew once saved was always saved. And he knew that some of us was going to try to take God's grace by granted, for granted rather. And Peter was trying to show us and tell us and even teach us how to come out of our carnal state. Yes, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and that's fine and good. And yes, we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And you know that you cannot lose your salvation. But here it is, y'all. It still doesn't give us a license to sin. True enough, we are saved by his grace. But yet still, that doesn't mean that we can go out and do anything and say anything that we want to say. I have have a saying for you. Yes, grace says you're getting by, but grace says you're not getting away. I say that again. Yes, we live by grace, and grace says you're getting by, but surely enough, grace is saying you're not getting away because we're going to all have to be accountable for our ways and actions. So again, that does not give us the license to sin now that I'm saved, but what it does show us that now we are a living testimony for Jesus Christ. Again, when we want to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, we must be careful of being carnal because carnal have a dangerous a side effect or it is dangerous in many ways. See, in order for us to grow in this faith, we must know what faith is. You see, faith is confidence in the word and in the power of God. It is the conviction of finding yourself guilty of believing what God said is true and what his promises will come to pass. See, faith begins where possibility ends. I say that again. Faith begins where possibility ends. See, faith is believing and trusting in God to do the impossible, like saving a wretch like you and I. Because how many know we couldn't save ourselves? How many know we we tried this thing over and over and over again. How many know trying to be good, praise God, young brother, <laughs> trying to be good, trying to be righteous, trying to live holy, we couldn't do it unless we had someone to die for us. And that someone is named Jesus Christ. Again, faith, y'all, is believing and trusting in God to do the impossible. And I'm reminded also in Hebrews what the Bible says according to chapter 11, verse 6. Y'all know the saying, it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You see, I want us to understand, no matter of good works, no matter of good works or good acts can compensate for the lack of faith. Because after all is said and done, when a man refused to believe God, he's calling God a liar. And don't you know faith is giving God his proper place and putting us in our proper place? Because it proves that we have more confidence in his eyesight than in our own eyesight. And as we look at this text, y'all, Peter starts by addressing the Christians by telling them that we are faith, our faith rather is very precious. Uh -huh. See, y'all, it's good to know that our faith is very important because faith comes from God, and our faith is more precious than gold. Yeah. Now, think about that. He says our faith is more precious than gold. Right. Now, we know gold is valuable. Matter of fact, gold is one of the most valuable things on this earth. But he says our faith is more valuable than gold. Y'all, can you imagine? Gold is imperishable, but when it is subject to intensive heat and burned with much pressure, it can be perishable. But oh, when you look at our faith, how many times our faith have been gone into to intensive heat? It may have been heat of somebody lying on us. It may have been in the heat of somebody trying to hurt us. It may have been in the heat by somebody scandalizing our name. But you held through because of your faith. 
See, our faith knows how to handle those kind of blows. Our faith knows how to handle those kind of pressures and pains in our life. But gold cannot handle those kind of things. But when faith comes, we see that our faith is very indestructible. Because the more our faith is tested, y'all, whether you know it or not, the more our faith is tested, the more our faith gets stronger. Our faith gets stronger when it's tested in the time of trials and temptations, or troubles rather. See, yes, tests and trials do not destroy our faith, but I'm here to tell you it's food for our faith. It is the fuel that fires up our faith. In other words, how can I build a fire when there's no fuel for the fire? How can I build a fire that make it real strong when there's no wood to burn it on? How can I grow in the faith if I've never been tested through a trial? How can I testify that the Lord has been good to me if every day has been sunny and everything that has been going right my way? How can I testify that God has been good to me if nothing never bad happened to me? How can I testify that God God did his thing or got me out of something when I never been through something. See, that's the testing of our faith. Our faith comes to make us strong. Our faith is there to help us hold on. Our faith is there to bring us through all that we're going through. So the more we go through trials, the more we go through tests, the more stronger our faith becomes. And James said it best when it comes to faith. He says, count it all joy when you when you fall into divers temptation. See y'all, this word divers temptation means various trials because God is testing your faith. And God would never tempt you with something evil, but he will test your faith because there is a difference. And I said it 400 billion times and I say it again. There is a difference between test and tempted. You know test is something that's what? Out of your control. Tempted is something that you brought on by yourself, by your sin, or either by Satan. See, you can tempt yourself by Satan, letting him have his way into your life. You can be tempted by Satan by giving in to your natural needs or desires. See, your eyes can get you in trouble by looking at the wrong thing. You've been tempted. Your thoughts has got you in trouble by thinking the wrong thing. You've been tempted. Your actions have been, uh, uh, your actions by doing the wrong thing has got you in trouble. You have fallen into your temptation. And anytime you go against God's will, don't you know you have fallen into temptation. But when we look at the word test, we can count it all joy because it is from God who wants to strengthen you. See, some things that are out of our control, I want to let you know it is a test. You know when that daughter or that son is giving you a trouble, something you didn't bring up on your own, count it all joy because you know it's a test. When you get laid off at the job, you know you've been keeping accuracy. You know your productivity is good. You know everything that you have done has been uh, pleasing to the super supervisor. But yet and still, they give you a pink slip. It is only a test. Just remember when somebody you love that's been so close to you, knowing that they love the Lord and you love the Lord, but then all of a sudden they pass away. It's a test of your faith. How are you going to act even though that loved one has gone on to glory? It's just a test. And what about that sickness? You didn't cause yourself to be sick. You didn't cause yourself to get ill. It's just a test of your faith to see what you will do when God brings you through. Just like that. It's just a test. These are things that are out of your control. And I can even mention about bills being due. You got more bills than you have money. You've been working here. You've been working now. You've been trying to make ends meet. But it seemed like doors are being shut. It seemed like lights are still being cut off. And it's not because of something you have done, but it's all because your, your faith is being tested. See, anything out of your control, you ought to count it joy. Because it's only a test. And God wants to see if you're going to pass the test or he wants to see if you're going to set back in your test. So you can grow now in the faith. And we as Christians, we can grow because God wants us to grow. 
He wants us to grow so we can learn from our mistakes to move on and tell somebody else what you've been through. This is your testimony time when you can tell somebody, you know what, baby, I've been through what you've gone through. I know what you're going through. I've seen it done in my own life. Don't feel bad. Don't feel like you're the only one that's been picked out to be picked on. I struggled with those drugs. I, got a, I had a problem with fornication. I knew some things in my life that wasn't right I had a drinking problem but I'm glad to tell you I got good news for you baby because he delivered me and I tell you what he can deliver you too all you have to do is just lean and depend on Jesus Christ you may not see it right now but just hold on to God son change your hand change will come one day but don't you give up on the fight baby don't you give up on anything that God is sending you through and no he's not going to deliver you from it but he will send you through it and that's what we ought to tell somebody when we're going through whatever we're going through when we're going through the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior again y'all he has the power but not just any kind of power but I'm glad to tell you he has divine power because again in verse 3 Paul says according to this he says according to this divine power have given us all things that unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him, him being Christ Jesus. And I want to just stop right there, y'all, and give you three things to help us to live a righteous life. Number one, he's given us life. So remember, we are all sinners who were dying and going to hell. But now we have life. Look at the scripture at Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. How did we receive it? Through Christ Jesus. Y'all, we worked on sinning, and therefore we deserve death. Can I give you an illustration? What happens when we mess up is just like this. You know you have some children, and you done told that child, now, baby, I got this pot cooling off right now, and I don't want to see you near it. I don't want to see you getting you some. I don't want to see none of that. But here it is. You go in the bedroom, watch TV, waiting for the pot to come cool down. And all of a sudden, you get back, you see a big old piece of hand up in the pot. You call so-and-so by his name. You get over here. Now, did you take that pot? He looking at you, just crumbed all over his face. He... You know he's lying. You know he's not telling the truth. But, what you, but there is a consequence for his sin. Am I right about it? It may be some whooping. It may be, you know, you ain't going to the park. You, some, it's something, there's a consequence for doing wrong. But y'all, look at the grace of God. He says, now the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Can I give you another example? I gave this example on yesterday. I gave the example that a gift is like a birthday gift. Every day is our birthdays as believers in Christ. Somebody can walk up right now and give me $500 for my birthday. And if you want to, I'll holler at you. But, but what I say, when I get that $500, I will say, thank you. Thank you. Now, that's a gift because it's my birthday. Notice, it was something that was given to me for free. But if I told you, here's $500, I need to wash my car, paint my house, I tell you, that's not a gift. That's a wage. I got to do something in order to earn it. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, hallelujah to the precious Lamb of God, he said, take it. It's yours. All you have to do is believe and receive. Here's your gift. Here's your birthday. And that's why I say every day of my life is a birthday gift because I'm born again. I'm free from sin. All because of this amazing gift. And what is that amazing gift? Rather, I say, who is the amazing gift? Which is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for all of my sins. So he has given us life through Jesus. But number two, y'all, he has given us godliness. How? By the Holy Spirit. That's who lives in the believer today. Yes, even that carnal Christian who lived by his flesh, but he is saved, he still has the Holy Spirit in him too. Though he may not feel him, though he may not yield to him, he still has the Holy Spirit. Just as well as spiritual Christians has the Holy Spirit. See, God knew in order for us to have godliness, he had to send his Holy Spirit to dwell in the believer. Because he knew for all have sinned. 
not used to sin, not had sin. Those are past tense, but we have sin, which is present tense. That means I sin today. I'm going to sin tomorrow. I have sinned in the past, but don't you know, I have a redeemer by the name of Jesus Christ. Again, that means I sin. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And now that we are sinners saved by grace, meaning I'm a sinner, but I'm still saved by his amazing grace, which I know God has given me life through Jesus Christ. And again, it's not making no excuse that I have the license to sin. And I don't want to ever take God's grace for granted. But I got to have the realization knowing that one day I'm going to take God's grace for granted. But I'm so glad that he sent his redeemer. But in order for me to have godliness, again, I need cleansing. I need refellowship. I need rather fellowship. I need restoration. And the only way I can do that is through the Holy Ghost. See, once I confess my sins to my Father in heaven, not only does he forgive me of my sins, but his Holy Ghost washes me. His Holy Ghost regenerates me. His Holy Ghost restores me. His Holy Ghost puts me right back in the fellowship with me and my Father. And I told you, I always will have the relationship, but every now and then, as a saint, we can lose the fellowship. And I gave that illustration time and time again. You know, your son may have to go to Japan. Your daughter may have to go to Jamaica. But yet and still, you have the relationship because that's still your son. That's still your daughter. That's the relationship. But see, the problem is why they're in Japan, why they're in Jamaica. There's no communication going on, so there's no fellowship. And that's what happens to us when we sin. See, I cannot go to my father unless I confess my sins to my father first and once I confess my sins to my father then the fellowship is back to restore so that's what the Holy Spirit does for us and that's why it says in 1st John uh, chapter 1 verse 9 he says if we meaning believers if we confess our sins he's what he's faithful we can stay with that by itself. He is what? Faithful. And that's good to know that we serve a faithful God. He's faithful, but not only is he faithful, y'all, but if you continue on reading on, he's just. That means he's justifying us. He's justified just as I am. I'm going to save you. I'm going to wash you, and I'm going to restore you. He's just to do what? Forgive us of our sins. But here, here's when the Holy Spirit kicks in. And he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. What do that mean? That means he done threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. He says, I remember your sins no more. The book has been closed on your past. And if he closed the book on your past, then stop looking to the past. If he have closed the book on your past, stop going back to the past. Keep on moving in the name of Jesus. Again, y'all. His Holy Spirit cleanses us. His Holy Spirit washes us. His Holy Spirit regenerates us. His Holy Spirit fills us. His Holy Spirit seals us and convicts us. And once the Holy Spirit does this, y'all, he gives us godliness that we need. So again, we know we need life. We have godliness. But then number three, we also need godliness through the Holy Spirit, but also he gives us knowledge of him through his word. See, the Bible is the word of God. And everything that God wants you to know about him, you can find it in his word. And to know about him is to read about him. And to know him is to love him. And that is the knowledge. You may not know everything about God, but you can get to know him starting today by reading Genesis chapter 1. But also at the end of all verse 3 in the scriptures we just read of 2 Timothy, he also calls us to a glory and virtue. Yes, he calls us to a right standing, a holy standing, or what you call a honor and stand up for righteousness kind of standing. Because when you look at verse 4, Peter goes on to talk about how precious the promise is. And some of the promises that God has given you is some of these I'm going to list right now. And if you want to have your pen and paper ready to write these scriptures down, you go right ahead. And if you need me to repeat it, I'll repeat it again. All right, so here are some the promises that God has given you. 
first of all, the freedom from sin's dominion, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 14. But then he also give us grace that is sufficient, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. But then also he give us power to obey his command, according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. But then he also give us victory over Satan, according to James chapter 4, verse 7. But then he also gives us power and promise to escape when we're tempted, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. But also, he also given us the benefits of being forgiven when we sin or when we have sin and we need to confess it, according to 1 John 1 and 9. But also, he has promised to forgive our sins and forget about our sins, according to Jeremiah 31, verse 34. But then he also promised that he will, we need to respond when he called us, according to Psalms chapter 50, verse 15. Now, if you want those scriptures, get with me at the service. And that's why it is, that's why it is important to grow in the grace of God. Because Peter goes on to say in verse 4 that God has given us these because he want us to be partakers of the divine nature so we can escape the things of the world. See, God wants us to get away from our wicked past. God wants us to get away from the wickedness of the world. And in, order, in other words, God doesn't want us to be burdened down with the pressures and the life of this world. He wants us to be the person with a made-up mind and a steadfast heart. He wants us to be the type of person that when trials come our way, people will walk up and say, Now, brother, I know you're going through some things in your life, but how is it, Deacon, uh, Pastor Wright, you still got a smile on your your face when your world is crumbling down why is it sister Roden that you still can glorify God when things are getting heavy sister Wooten you ought to I don't understand how is it that things are you still doing it or being about your father's business and see this is your opportunity to get your witness on this is your opportunity to evangelize because you'll be able to say because God is keeping me and since he's keeping me I have learned how to serve him through the storm and I have learned how to serve him through the rain. Yeah, it's going to rain sometime, but you know what? I got an umbrella in Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's going to rain sometime, but I'm glad I got a raincoat, which is Jesus Christ. It may be raining on the outside, but you know what? I got a keeper that knows how to keep me dry. Yes, there's a leak in this old building, and my soul has to move sometime, but through it all, I will not get wet. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. See, that's our time to tell somebody about some, uh, that's our time to tell somebody about the good news of Jesus, how we learn how to serve him. See, you can tell them that through it all, God has seen me through. And you will realize at that point, you'll be like, now that wasn't what I really want to say. So you will realize now that's the Holy Ghost speaking in me. That's the Holy Ghost speaking through me. That's the Holy Ghost using me. I can't believe, I will, you say, I believe and I'm growing in the grace of God. Because there have been a time I would have fired up a cigarette when my nerves was bad. There would have been a time I asked that bartender, give me one more drink. There would have been a time I wouldn't have been shooting up in my veins trying to relieve my pressure. There would have been a time I would have cussed that person out. But God is keeping me and I see myself growing in the grace and the knowledge of God. There were some times where I wanted to pick up my fist and start throwing punches. But I find myself now picking up the Bible and want to read his word. I know that God is using me. See, in order to grow. You need to know how to tap into your spiritual resources. In other words, knowing the benefit of being a Christian, knowing the benefit that being a child of God. Y'all, for example, you know when you go to your job, they have a what you call a resource center. And at the resource center, you can find all kind of benefits as an employee. But if you never bother to go to that resource center, <coughs> you'll be missing out on a lot of your blessings. But you got to search what, what is good for you and what is right for you and your family. When you go on, go on that research center, it says, okay, you, you, got, uh, you can have insurance at this price. You can have life insurance at this price. Don't you know, since you are an employee, there is a discount for you if you, get, you rent a car from a certain place? I know my wife, boy, she be hooking us up on the vacation stuff. All because she worked for a vacation deal. But if deal never looks at those vacation 
vacation deals, how can we get the hook up on vacation? But I'm glad I serve a savior that has a be- I have a beautiful wife that knows how to hook us up on vacation because she give us some good discounts at some beautiful hotels. But how do I know? Because she knows how to go to her resource. And we as believers in Christ, in order to receive our blessings, we need to learn to go to our resource. Because if you learn this word, I tell you, when this word get in you and you get into this word, you will know how to exercise your resource. Yeah, see, 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 the job ain't going to tell you they'll take out 401 unless you tell them to take out the 401. Job ain't going to give you no benefits of, of retirement unless you ask for the benefits of retirement. See, you just cannot receive benefits unless you go in, start asking questions, and reading information. Y'all, in order for us to grow in this grace, in order for us to grow in the faith, you must know how to tap into your resource, just like you do at your job. And on that job, just like us in this Christian life, as being Christians, See, it's more than just being a Christian because you have benefits as a Christian. And Peter is saying right now that you need to understand verse 3. You need to understand verse 4. And you need to understand verse 5 and what it's saying. And it says, aside beside this, given all diligence. Now watch this. He says, add to your faith. Key word, add to your faith. Add to your faith. It's more than just faith. Y'all add to your faith. Virtue, add to your faith, knowledge, add to your faith, all the perseverance and going through. In order to grow in the faith, there must be a desire to receive the faith. See, you must want to grow in this, in this spiritual life. Growing in the faith is available to you and to everyone that believes. But again, you have to know how to tap into your resource to get it. See, Peter's saying in order to grow, your desire should line up with God's word. You see, God doesn't make you do anything. And I say it again. Once you are saved, God does not make you do anything. And once you are, even when you're not saved, did he ever force his love upon anybody? No, you came to Jesus because you knew and heard about the gospel. The conviction of the Holy Spirit said, now here's the opportunity. What are you going to do? You're going to reject him or are you going to receive him? God doesn't force his love on anybody. But oh, when you get inside his will. Then that's when the benefits of being a Christian take place. Again, he doesn't force his love or his will upon anybody. He doesn't have robot Christians. In order for us to grow, you must have a change of heart. In order for you to grow, you must have a desire to do God's will. In order for us to grow, in other words, it starts with a prayer life. Yes, it begins with communicating first with the Father. How can you do something if you don't know the chain of commands? How can you do something if you don't know the CEO? How can you do something if you haven't received orders from the president? You got to communicate with the master, the commander of chief, which is Jesus Christ, God the Father, who has sent his only begotten son. See, you ought to talk to the Father while you have a chance. See, the Father will let you know his will. Because he says, when I am weak in the faith, or whether when I'm weak in the faith, or anybody that desires to go before him, you can go to the throne of grace, and you can go to the throne of mercy. <clears throat> See, if my desire is lining up with his desire. Excuse me, y'all. Then the father charge it in the name of Jesus. And, fa- and when the Father answer your prayers, that lets you know that you're trusting and leaning and depending on him. That lets you know that you're going to follow the example that he gives to you. And now that the Father will not reject your calling when you pray, because he'll answer your prayer with a yes. <clears throat> he'll answer your prayer with a wait. And he'll answer your prayer with not now. And notice what's going to happen. And what you will see is that whatever God's will is, it'll be your will. And guess what you'll say in your heart? If it's not your will, God, my soul should still be satisfied. And the first thing you will notice, God is working on your patience. When you begin to pray, 
and ask for those things in favor, he'll give it to you, but you may just have to wait because he's still working it out for your good. See, if I give it to you right now, you'll blow it. But if you just hold on to my unchanging hand, I got to send you through a couple of pre-trials. I got to send you through a couple of tests. And once I send you through a couple of tests, I then will qualify you to get your financial or your spiritual or your breakthrough gift. But right now, I can't give it to you, so I'm going to try your patience. I'm going to send some troubles your way. I'm going to see if you're still going to worship me. I'm going to bless you with the car, but I may not bless you with the Cadillac. I'm going to bless you with food, but it may not be steak or lobster. I'm going to bless you with a home, but it won't be a mansion. But still, I'm going to try your patience. So you keep on trusting in the Lord because it may seem like he didn't hear your prayers, but he heard your cry for growth, and he is testing you out to let you know how weak you really are. See, God sometimes sends trials your way to let you know that this wasn't good for you. See, that's why homeboy right now is doing your bad because he wasn't good for you. But you said you had to have you a man, and this is the man you wanted. And now you realize he ain't no good. Now he's watching cartoons while you going to work. <laughs> Lights are getting cut off because he don't want to work. <laughs> but no, this is the man you thought you needed to have. <laughs> I had to pick on the sisters. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So he is testing you to let you see how weak you really are. And trials are going to come because he wants you to see if you really want to grow. You have to stand strong and pay close attention with your prayer life until God wants to make you who he wants to make you. Because prayer is going to help you to be patient. I say that again. Prayer is going to help you to be patient. There's going to be people you love that will get on your nerves. <laughs> But you going to have to have that patience. And I'm going to tell you why. Because that's a test of God trying to see what you're going to do. Now, you going to backhand that kid or you going to pray for that kid? <laughs> I see, Sister Right. <laughs> hey, it's a test of your patience. <laughs> Amen. Pray for him. Amen. But remember, patience is a growing process. And God wants you to be mature. Because in order to be a soldier in his army, you have to stand strong. Again, so it's not only is it a desire, but I want to let you know it also must be a determination. That means you have to have a made-up mind to grow in the faith. And in order to grow in the faith, that means you have to do whatever it takes to know more and more about Jesus and his holy word. Because Peter said to add to your faith virtue and to virtue, knowledge. And to grow, you have to pray, study the word of God, get involved in some sound teaching church, get involved to some sound teaching preaching, get involved in some sound teaching activities. See, there's a time now you need to get involved in these things and stay away from the clubs. Stay away from your weak spots. Stay away from the drug house. This is the time you need to be exercising your faith. But it's a sad thing when you find yourself lingering too close to the world. Because there's so much false teaching going on about faith. Now, y'all listen. Some would tell you that because you're not rich, you don't have faith. Some would tell you the reason why you're catching hell on your job is because you don't have enough faith. Some will even tell you that in order for you to receive faith, you have to do this and do that. True enough, but what are you doing? So get into the word of God and let the word get into you. Because the word is there to make you strong. Praying and reading the word will give you power and the patience to go on through. Now, everybody can't read King James. King James got some difficult words in there. So I recommend you get you an NIV Bible for those that are babes in Christ. It's plain language. It's simple to understand. It's easy to comprehend. And as you grow forth, if the Lord tell you to move on to uh, King James, then you do that. But I recommend any Christian to get a Mar American Standard or an NIV because it's going to talk plain English to you about God's holy word. 
See, and that's why you shouldn't get caught up in quoting scriptures because there are so many forms of Bible that is meaning the same. So again, get you one of those good American standard Bibles because the word is there to make you strong. And praying and reading his word will give you the power to have patience until your change comes. Yes, there's power in this, uh, in this provision. But then I want to let you know there's power in perseverance. And you will feel weak sometimes, but he will make you strong. And when you get weary, he will give you rest. Just let your passion be his passion. And in the time of your growth, you will have the de determination. And when trials come, ask him to help you through those trials. And when trials come, ask him to help you, but then also tell, tell him that you want to understand what you just have been left from. See, in other words, you can learn from your mistakes. You don't have to go back to the drawing board because taking them away will make you weak if he just take them away. But help him, tell him that you want to go through what you're going through so I can be strong in the faith. Don't give up on God. Let's get stronger in God. And see, don't you know? When you're weak in the faith, it can have you to rebel against God. So you don't want to rebel against God. Ask God to help you to go through what you're going through so you can learn from it. For example, let me give you a good example. When you really love someone, you have good days, right? But then you have some bad days in that marriage too, right? But when you have bad days, you just don't come home, do you? Yes, you come home. <laughs> Amen. You still faithful coming home? Hey, y'all didn't fail. Y'all didn't pass test? Y'all ain't passing that test? Oh, uh oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but when y'all have a disagreement, do you stop coming home? No, you still be faithful and come home. Oh, when you have a disagreement, you still wash their clothes, don't you? You still fix up something to eat, right? What we do, don't we, Sister Rose? Hey, Amen. <laughs> I can't speak for nobody else. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Again, you have your disagreements, but that don't mean you just walk up, walk out, and you don't give up. Well, that's the same way in your Christian life. You, you know, you, you're going to have some bad days. But do you give up on God? I hope you don't. <laughs> Amen. I lost my spot. Let me get back to it. <laughs> Let me get back to it. Amen. Again, you show unconditional love, just like God showed unconditional love towards you. And if you love that person, and if the love, rather, is weak or the marriage is weak, no sooner or later when somebody walk by to catch your eye, you know what? You're going to go the other way. That's just, that's just where it is if there's no love involved. You will give over to your temptation so quick because you don't know how to have a strong marriage. And that's the way it is in this Christian journey. You got to have a strong fellowship with God because when somebody preaches something else, you'll say, uh-uh. Ain't -uh. <laughs> what the Bible says. You'll know that you won't get turned out by a different doctrine. But there are some that are so weak in the faith. They'll go here to hear some preaching. They'll go here to hear another preacher. But you stand still with sound teaching and sound doctrine. Then you'll know what's right and wrong. So again, there must be a desire. There must be a determination. And I leave you with this and I take my seat. You also have to have discipline. Yeah, I know you don't want to hear that. But discipline is a must as well. Notice, again, he says, add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and then watch this and to your knowledge uh, uh, temperance but then into your temperance patience and then patience godliness godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness guess what charity see it takes discipline to grow in the grace of God and I'm not ashamed to tell you I haven't arrived there yet I still got some ways to go, but I can say it ain't long, <laughs> but I do have some ways to go, amen, and I know that I'm trusting and leaning on Jesus. Yes, it's good to have a change of heart, and it's good to have a change of mind, 
But see, we struggle when it comes to that change of action. See, our actions get the best of us. You see, God calls every Christian to have a life of discipline. Some have defined this as controlling power of the will under the operation of the Holy Spirit. Because that's who you're going to need when it, when it all boils down for discipline. You're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost. See, you just can't pray to God any kind of way. There must be a discipline in your Bible study. There are some times you have to take time out to read to understand God's word to gain understanding. See, there must be a discipline in the use of your time. You must make time for God. That is the only way you can grow in the faith. Paul said it best when it comes to discipline. Y'all, he said, therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight and not as one who beats the earth, but I discipline my body. I bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself become disqualified. Let me break that down just a little clearer. Mr. Paul is saying, when I throw punches, I'm making sure I'm making direct contact. And when punches are thrown at me, my body is disciplined and strong enough to handle the blows. So what he's saying in here, he says, so when I preach to you, I'm not only just preaching to you, but also I'm preaching to myself because I'm not disqualified. I, I'm subject to teach uh, getting, uh, getting ridiculed because of some things in my life as well. So therefore, I got to let my light shine. So when I, when I have my struggles and my pain, I can still tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus Christ. So when I'm aiming my aim, I'm going to make sure I hit bullseye. In other words, y'all, we must believe on practicing what we believe in. And those that are babes in Christ, those who are just now understanding the meaning of salvation, again, start off with the milk of the word of God. Y'all don't try to get too deep. Because if you get too deep, you'll find yourself drowning and drifting and tossing to and fro. But come to, I will say, new membership class, which I teach at 915. Come and go into the Wednesday night Bible study where our pastor is teaching and preaching, well, teaching sound doctrine. But then also come and hear what be to you how to, how to learn what you believe in. Because there's a lot of people that are Baptists that don't even know what Baptists mean. All you know is your mama went there. So that's all you know. I've been Baptist all my life. But what do Baptists mean? I don't know. But I know my mama went there. How did that benefit in your witness life? See, pray to God for help in the time when you don't understand. Again, be to you Bible study. Just as babes, you are going to fall sometime. But when you fall, just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Again, don't you give up on God because God hasn't given up on you. See, it's a growing process. And sooner or later, you will find yourself passing tests. And I'm talking to the babes in Christ now. You will find yourself passing tests. And the more you pass tests, the more stronger your faith will get. And the stronger your faith will get, the more you'll grow in his grace. And when you grow in the faith, you will know that you're justified by that faith. And you will have peace with God. And not only will you have peace with God, but you will have access to the throne of God's grace. And not only to the throne of his grace, but also to the throne of his mercy. But see, you got to be able to stand. And when you stand, you'll be able to stand and rejoice in knowing that my hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And that ought to bring joy to all of our hearts, knowing where God has brought us from and where we are today and where God is going to take us to. But again, you have to give God the glory in the time of your tribulation. Because your tribulation work in patience and you will realize that you have the virtue like David and you will have the knowledge like Solomon and you will be patient like Job. But also you will have godliness like Daniel, but also a brotherly love like Jonathan and even the love of God like John did. And that's what I want to leave you on today. That Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. But he didn't just stop by dying. But then when he died, he got up on, on a, a Friday morning. But then it didn't just stop there. But now he reigns forevermore in heaven. And for those that may 
want to know what salvation is? The Bible tells us according to John 3 and 16, for God so loved his wor the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's what I want to leave with you on today. I won't say nothing else. I'm going to take my seat. Amen.